Hello, my name is Jack. And I'm Sam. So this and is this is Al, Al the ant eater. We're going very high. So ant eaters are in um, order of families, Edentata, which basically means no teeth. And ant eaters literally have no teeth, but they're also in the same family with armadillos and sloths who have teeth but have like nubby teeth. Um, and they have these huge claws for digging in the trees. Like, he'll dig pieces of bark off so he can stick his tongue in and get bugs out for digging in the dirt. Um, and then he has a super, super long tongue, like really long, skinny tongue. And so he digs, digs, and then sticks his tongue in. Um, and then he's got this prehensile tail. So prehensile tails are really good for living in the trees because it basically is like a fifth arm. Um, and so you can use the claws to climb trees and then the tail to kind of wrap around the branches to get around. It also helps him distribute his weight onto five different parts of his, of his body. And you can't smell him, but he smells a little like a skunk. And that's actually a defense mechanism. He'll pee when, um, when there's a predator around. He'll get on his hind limbs and get kind of big to try and look bigger. So here's the pencil tail. Very, very strong. Strong. See how he's able to get up like that? He's a healthy boy. First question. How did Al come to you? His mom was hit by a car when he was much younger. And he was found on the side of the road next to her body. Um, this was about, this is the end of last year. It was about six months ago. But luckily he's very healthy now and he's grown to almost not quite adult size, about half of adult size, but the thing with releasing animals is you want to release them before they're actually fully grown so that they still, so they're not too imprinted on humans and then also so that they have like time to continue to grow and, and learn how to live in the forest. What exactly is animal GPS collar? So a GPS collar for an animal is it's similar to the same kind of GPS that you have in your car, like if you're, if you're trying to find your way around except it's fitted to the size of, that an animal can wear and it goes around their neck. And the point of that is it stores all the data of where the animal travels to throughout the day and then you have a device that you hold and you have to be about 30 meters away from them and then it downloads the data from the collar onto your device and then you're able to just go and check on them once a day and find out everywhere that they've gone during that day. How does it help the animals? So it, the reason why it's helpful is Al was hand raised, so we don't know how much he knows about surviving the wild. Clearly by looking at him, like for example right now, he knows how to find food. I mean, he finds food really, really well on trees and in the ground and everywhere he goes. But we don't know how much he knows about finding shelter. We don't know if, if he knows that, how far he needs to search in a day. Um, all things that his mom would have taught him that she wasn't able to because she was hit by a car. So in order to release him, we just need to try and keep an eye on him and make sure that he's progressing normally in the wild and finding shelter and finding food and gaining weight and all these things. So with the GPS collar, we'll be able to track wherever he goes throughout the day, every day that he's wearing it, um, down to the exact tree that he's been in. And then we'll also be able to find him again and weigh him, um, make sure he looks healthy, and, and we'll be able to do this over a period of months rather than just opening the door, releasing him, and saying, good luck, and hoping that he does well. This way we'll be able to document how he's doing and make sure that he's actually doing well in the forest before we release him. How much does the cost? To get started, we need $6,000. Um, half of that is for each collar itself, $3,000 for each collar, and then $3,000 is for the actual device that we'll use to um, ex extract the data from the collars themselves. take part in this research? Well, um, the collars are very useful and it'll save us a lot of time in order of finding him and figuring out what he's doing, but we'll definitely need volunteers to help analyze the data, um, to help us get the data downloaded and observing him and figuring out what he's doing. All right, so this is a trial run. Al will be the first to receive uh, one of the GPS collars. And the more money that we raise and the more animals that we can use the GPS collars on, and the more GPS collars we have, um, the more opportunities for volunteers to help us watch these animals, uh, also help us analyze the data, and also you at home can follow along and we'll, we'll send out regular updates saying where they are, where they're going, how they're doing, and how basically you can help us from home and you can participate from home with the release 
program. And basically, because this is, this is not just a release program, it's also a research project. So we're going to be basically figuring out the best way to release these animals and, and also the best way, ultimately, um, raising them and training them for the wild. And so we're going to need lots of help with doing all of that. And so volunteers like Jack will be able to help out with that whole process. Really need money for the GPS collars. Um, I know that we could release these animals without them. He, he does a really good job foraging through the trees. He's very healthy. He's, a, he's an amazing creature, but the bottom line is I just don't think it's responsible to release an animal, especially one that I've raised, that I'm not an anteater, um, without monitoring them post-release and making sure they're doing well in the forest, making sure they're getting around, making sure they're finding food, making sure they're gaining weight at least for you know six months to a year and then eventually after that we'll know okay they're doing well and we can and we can release them for good